Willie grew up in a town of Fairfield, which is outside of, of Birmingham. Fairfield was a planned community, um, didn't have quite as many of the overt racial tensions that Birmingham had. The blacks and whites worked together in the, in the s steel mills down there. But most importantly for Willie was that um, you know, he was a great athlete from the, the day he, he could start crawling. And he played sports with the, the other kids, the white kids as well, the as well as the black kids, football, baseball, basketball. And the white kids wanted Willie on their team. I mean, they weren't stupid. They wanted, wanted Willie Mays to be on their team. And so he got along with those kids. And so the combination of sports um, being this kind of great um, incubator of, of kids getting along, as well as Willie's, the, the adults in Willie's life, Willie's father, uh, the, the aunts who raised him and, and others always said to Willie, you know, your job is to stay out of trouble, keep your head down, and try to get along with whites. There's nothing to be gained for a black person in Alabama to running afoul of whites. So Willie made an, an effort to always um, stay clear of, of trouble. And because of that, you know, he, he did feel insulated from those racial tensions. And why does he say that life wasn't too hard for him? Because he was such a great athlete the adults that surrounded him insulated Willie from a, a lot of, of other things. So Willie didn't have to do um, quite as much as, as others in terms of like, you know, getting a job after school uh, when, when he was in high school. Willie's father just said, you focus on sports. Everyone knew at a young age that Willie's ticket out of Alabama, out of a, out of a life that really um, had very few op opportunities for blacks at that time. You know, basically blacks worked in the steel mills or they had some other menial jobs. Willie's ticket out of that life was sports and that's what Willie loved and, uh, and because of that you know life was not as hard for him as it may have been for others in, in his peer group. What did his father do when he caught Mays uh, smoking and drinking on the street corner? Well from the get-go Willie's father told him you cannot smoke or drink because they'll harm your body and you have to have a healthy body if you're gonna do well in sports. So one day when Willie was like 11 or 12, his father caught Willie with a, another friend um, smoking on the, uh, on the street corner. So Willie's father brings him home and he gets these white owl cigars and he lights one up for Willie and says, smoke it boy. Willie smoked it and almost gagged uh, when, when he did it. Then he got out some moonshine and he said, boy, drink it. Willie drank it and, and threw up. And um, from then on, Willie never smoked or drank. And to this day, one of the things that Willie is most proud of is that you know, he did steer clear of those kinds of vices, which he attributes to his durability in, in baseball. How did breaking his arm help him in baseball? When Willie was 11 years old, he was in a, a, a tree watching a high school football game. He fell asleep, and he fell out of the tree, and he broke his, his arm. This created a huge scare. Um, for Willie and his friends and family because again even at that age everyone knew that Willie was destined to play sports so if he with this broken arm he may not be able to throw the ball uh, as well but after the cast came off remarkably Willie could not only still throw the ball but he could throw the ball harder it somehow adjusted his throwing motion that actually proved to help Willie so I think he was fortunate in that sense. Among many of his gifts he had an exceptional hearing how did that benefit him in baseball? It benefited him in baseball because Willie got great jumps uh, off of uh, when, when, the, when the ball hit, hit the bat. He, he got these great jumps on the ball. And Willie said a lot of that had to do with the sound of the ball hitting the bat. The crack um, gave him the information he needed to know how hard the ball was hit. And in, in talking to one of Willie's boyhood friends, he told me that um, you know, even as a child, Willie had this gift. He said, you know, you could be talking in a whisper on one side of the room and Willie would hear it on the, the other side of the room. And Willie's friend said to me, his ears were a weapon, which I love. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. Thank you.